thermal ablation. Oftentimes, a long segment of vein, such as the greater saphenous vein, refluxes. In this case, we can perform a procedure called endovenous thermal ablation. A long tube is inserted into the vein. Energy is applied using laser or radio frequency. The ablation procedure is done in the office and takes approximately two hours from start to finish. Initially, you will be given a relaxing medication such as Valium in addition to a mild anti-inflammatory agent such as ibuprofen. Your leg will then be prepped and draped in a sterile fashion to minimize any risk of infection. A small needle is then inserted, generally just below the knee. Once this needle is inside the vein, a small wire is threaded through the needle. A small tube, called a catheter, is then advanced over the wire in order to accommodate the laser fiber or radio frequency ablation device. A numbing medication is then injected along the entire length of planned treatment to protect surrounding normal tissue and to minimize discomfort during the ablation procedure. With your leg now numb and the catheter in place, the laser or radio frequency device is then turned on and the catheter is slowly pulled back through the vein. The heat from the ablation device thermally injures the lining of the diseased vein and the vein closes permanently. Once the ablation procedure is finished, a Steri-Strip tape is placed over the entrance incision and a prescription strength compression stocking is placed on the leg. You are then released to go home. You can resume most daily activity immediately. We want you up and walking as much as possible. You must wear a prescription strength compression stocking for 48 hours, night and day, following the procedure. After 48 hours, you may take the stocking off at night, but you must wear the compression stocking the majority of the day for an additional seven days. At approximately one week following the procedure, you will return to the clinic for a follow-up ultrasound to make sure there have been no complications relating to the procedure and to assess treatment efficacy. We also do a one-month follow-up visit where we again assess for any complications and assess the procedure's success. At this one-month follow-up visit, we typically determine the possible need for additional treatment. You will experience some pain from the ablation procedure with bruising along the length of the treated vein. This can last for approximately two weeks. The pain can be minimized by taking acetaminophen and ibuprofen. If you need something stronger, we may prescribe a different pain medication. There are some potential associated risks with ablation, sclerotherapy, and other vein procedures. Although uncommon, risks include infection, bleeding, deep and superficial vein thrombosis, numbness, blistering, and skin discoloration. Infection risk is minimized by our use of strict sterile technique during ablation and phlebectomy procedures. Persistent bleeding can usually be controlled with approximately five minutes of moderate pressure. Your risk of deep venous thrombosis or DVT is less than 1%. The risk is higher if you have a history of previous DVT, are taking oral contraceptives, hormone replacement therapy, or if you have a known clotting disorder. Occasionally, patients may form what we call a knuckle clot, which is a small clot that extends from the recently treated greater saphenous vein and protrudes into the deep vein. Of these knuckle clots, the vast majority of them resolve spontaneously in approximately four to six weeks. In most cases, there is no need for blood thinners to resolve the clots. Another possible complication from endovenous ablation is persistent numbness or paresthesia. This condition occurs in up to 5-7% to of patients treated with thermal ablation. In most cases, sensation returns to the affected area within 3-6 to six months. In a small number of cases, this paresthesia can be permanent. The numbness, however, does not interfere with normal activity. 
most patients are not particularly bothered by the paresthesia when it occurs. Another complication from thermal ablation is possible skin discoloration with hard lumpiness under the skin. This lumpiness is often the vein itself being turned into scar tissue.